Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today, we're taking our IP camera, IP, that's why internet protocol, not INTP, but basically we are going full throttle on security. So I have with me right here, 4K, eight camera security setup. I'm gonna be setting up, installing it, unboxing it, showing you guys how it all works together on the show. I've been currently using a Google Nest security cameras, Wi-Fi security cameras, all that kind of rubbish. And the quality of those guys are bad and uh, they're very, very slow to get footage out of the system. So I've got right here, boom, boom, boom. This is, oh, 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 oh my God, hey. Oh, oh. This is the real, this is the, what is this? This is a brown box. And in the front it says it is a tiny Reolink RLK 16. That means it can support 16 cameras at the same time. And it's got eight 4K cameras inside this. I emailed their customer support. They said it is encrypted, so that's good. Someone steals it, they want access to the footage. It says that it's good quality 4K and potentially I can actually get the recordings onto my computer easy, FTP upload to my NAS drive, all this kind of cool stuff. So I really want to try this guy out. Oh, this is the NVR, which means network video recording device. And we got loads of boxes actually, I don't know which is which. So we got this beautiful kit. I got this guy from AliExpress because it was a couple of hundred dollars cheaper than the cheapest I found it on Amazon. So apparently you really link support warranty claims for AliExpress. So you get two to three years on these devices and you get three beautiful cardboard boxes, which I'm gonna open up with you guys today. So, so I was researching different security camera providers over here in Australia. Swan is the number one provider. They kind of use Hick Vision technology, but their customer support is, oh, it's obscenely slow. I'd send them an email and they wouldn't reply to me in weeks and weeks and weeks. I guess they were very, very busy. Reallink, I send them an email, they reply back straight away. And uh, with Swan, I asked them a couple of questions, if they're encrypted and if I can access the footage over the network. They replied back to one of my queries and the other one, they kind of just brushed me off. They didn't really know the answer. Whereas, at least with Reolink, when I did ask them a question, they said, yes, you can access it, access it over the network. Apparently you can use like VLC or upload it straight to your NAS drive and it's encrypted. Okay. All right, so we have two boxes of IP cameras. That's not cameras that P remember, follow the show. And we have, this is the NVR. Which is a very tightly sealed. I'm just gonna get out for you. Now I've never actually installed IP cameras before in my life, so I'm gonna be having some fun. I've got a fish tape, I've got cabling all mapped out for this place. I'm gonna try figuring out with you guys on the channel. So make sure you subscribe to see that video. Please, if you jump on me, I'll catch you. Come on, just jump, I'll catch you, I promise you. Sorry, come on. Uh, okay, Asha, please don't, please don't. don't. Uh, but this is gonna be the hub of where all the technology lies. So around the back here is the ports where all the video cameras will plug in. And you've got some warning signs that plastic bags can be dangerous. Just be careful about them. There you go, if you didn't know. That's why I guess they started charging these plastic bags in the supermarkets, because they're dangerous. That's our first cookie unboxed here. On off switch, it's got USB, HDMI, VGA, LAN, and 16 ethernet ports for 16, up to 16 security cameras. And at the front, you got another USB, and you got menu system up, down, left, right, and a serial number. Looks nice and clean. I like clean, I like, I like new and fresh. And inside the second box, you get manual, you're gonna be needing that. Power adapter. 
That's good. And fingers crossed, yes, we have the Australian plug. Sometimes when you buy from international sellers, you don't actually get the right plug, but it looks like we've got everything. So we've got a HDMI cable, we've got an ethernet jack to plug into our computer, and it comes with a mouse. Pretty cool. And screws if you wanted to mount the NVR. Let me just unbox all that to show you what you get. And in contestant number two, we have four security cameras. I'm gonna start one by one and see if I can install them myself. I've had quotes from electricians. They want like a thousand dollars to do it for you. So I'll see, I'll see what I can do. One thing to note is when getting security cameras, um, the installers will like to offer to purchase the security cameras for you. And they usually give you an inferior product. So I've had lots of uh, products with some weird brand name manufacturers and even um, Hikvision, they're the number one security firm in the world. And in Australia, they still sell them, but apparently in countries like America, they've been banned for security reasons by like the CIA, FBI, all those kind of people. Even though they are the number one security provider, uh, you know, why risk it? I know they're, they're allowed in Australia, but it's, it's a bit conspicuous. But that being said, pretty much all the resellers of security cameras, just double check, because most of them actually just use Hikvision's technology. So I don't know what the point of the ban is, if, anyone's, if everyone's still using them. Okay, so we get a manual replacement sheet to let you know where to drill your holes. We will be drilling on this channel. And let's see our first security camera here. It's a nice little tiny baby. Look at it, looks like a little beautiful, ooh, nice and clean and white. I'm gonna have to paint my house white to make it not conspicuous. And around the back, it plugs in via ethernet or via power if you don't have enough power over ethernet. You also get a big, big set of ethernet cables. Now this is gonna be a large connection. Apparently they use the Cat5 low quality ethernet cables. You're better off buying new ones. I mean, you can just see the bends over here already. So these are pretty flimsy and they're yeah, very flimsy out of the box. I'll probably play around with these ones, but when I'm fully figured out everything, I'll probably buy some Cat6 cables or maybe even Cat7 or 8 just to solidify my connection because I'm gonna be spending hours and hours and hours installing or hiring someone to install these cameras for me and I want those wires to be mm, beautiful. All right, so in that box, you got mounting screws, you got ethernet jacks, the lids for ethernet in case you wanna be snipping them and cutting them, making them water sealed. You got four cameras and there's another box of four cameras. We've got ethernet cable city, ethernet cable, four sets to match the number of cameras, to match the number of cameras there are in this box. And you have the waterproofing seal for your cables. That's what you get in the box. I think I need to turn this guy on and see if it works. All right, so to get started, I'm just gonna set this bad boy up. I'm just gonna set this bad boy up here because this is where I have my monitor just to get it set up. And this is where the DC bolt goes in. It's a standard kettle plug. The one they give you is pretty short, just uh, that's uh, tiny. So I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna get it connected to my power supply. So there's the power on, power on. There you go, just starting up. There you go, loads up straight away. Please create a password using at least six characters. So I need a keyboard and mouse. I've heard that keyboards don't work, it's just a mouse. This is the mouse that comes with it. It's a wide cable and it looks kind of nice. I might use it, but first before that, I'm gonna try using a wireless keyboard and mouse just to see if I can make it easier to use. I don't think this setup works with this guy. I am able to move it, but it requires me having to tap on the keyboard. So it looks like when you try to plug in any keyboard with the mouse combination at the same time, it just doesn't let the mouse work properly. So standard stuff here, you give it a password for admin and then you set up your time zone. Resolution, I'll go for 4K. We can change all the stuff later, so there's no problems. And you choose a hard drive, continue. 
you choose how to access it on the network. So the DVR comes with an ethernet connector. This one over here, blue one. So I'm just gonna be plugging this, connecting to my Mac because I don't want it going online to start off with. I wanna test out the security before I do anything like that. This goes in around the back here on that connection just there. And I'm just gonna hook it up to my Mac. So now I'm gonna click previous and next. And it, this time there's a different auto DNS is connected and it doesn't have the error message of saying it can't find the network. So I'll click next again, refresh. And this is looking for devices that are connected to the NVR. So at this point, I'm gonna connect the camera. So this is a long cable that comes with it because it's the first camera. Boom. And then you plug the other piece into the back of the camera. I'm using the ethernet jack there and you just connect it. Hit refresh. There you go, straight away, we got a camera automatically on our screen. It's as easy as that and you can give it a name. I'll hit next. You can configure your email for email notifications. I'm gonna just disable that for now, I'll skip it. It's pretty cool though, because it allows you to attach a picture and you can have intervals of up to five minutes between 30 seconds to half an hour intervals and you can email several addresses. So I guess for this stage, I'm gonna set up a specific Gmail account and set this up later, but it's good to know we can do this. Take a note of your UID. I just took a picture of that earlier. You can also send it as an email once that's set up. DDNS, you can set up a dynamic, basically um, you get static IP addresses and dynamic IP addresses. Most home connections are on a dynamic IP address, which means every time you reset or every now and then, the internet provider will actually change your IP address. So you can use a service like no-ip.com, which gives you a static IP to your dynamic IP. I don't really want this on the internet for now, so I'm gonna skip this step. And you can set up your time online using a, a time synchronization server. I'm just gonna set up manually. I can see that it's successfully detected that it's on the 6th of December and that is actually the correct time. So it's probably gotten that time from my Mac, I'm guessing. And there's it, it's up, boom. Easy on the screen. I wanna plug all the cameras in and just let it play. Channel settings, you get a plethora of different options to play with. So I guess camera number one, output 4K, it's output 4K apparently. Uh, IP channel, that's number one. Recording, you can get it to record audio. So that'd be pretty cool. Yo, 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 yo. It's got a microphone hole there for audio. I'll get to do that. Search, go back into the history, network, alarm. Does it buzz? That's all right. So it has a mini siren. It can buzz whenever there's like motion detection. By default, it auto reboots every Sunday at 2 a.m. I probably recommend changing that, make it maybe a different time. So I guess professional criminals, they know at 2 a.m. they have a window for a reboot. So maybe just change it to a random time so people who know these devices don't scout you out. But I guess if they know these devices, they'll just rip it out anyway or wear a mask. So now it's kind of set up and up and running. I want to see how to access it using my Mac. All right, managed to get it working. Access on the screen, access on the screen. So if like me, you want to connect your NVR directly to your Mac, your computer, you don't want it going on the internet, online, all that kind of stuff, you have to give it a static network address. So I gave it the IP address 192.168.2.1 because my normal internet lies on 1.1. .1. Do you know how to access the router? So I just give it two. I'm gonna change that later because I obviously security risk. Subnet mask 255.255.255.0. Default gateway 192.168.0.1. And static DNS. And these are the default settings other than IP address. And over on my Mac, I went into system preferences, network, 
and then I selected my dongle, which converts USB to Ethernet. I went into advanced and rather than configuring it using DHCP, I configured it manually. I set my IP address pretty much exactly the same settings as my MVR, except instead of it giving it a dot one, I gave this computer a dot two. So it's just a unique IP address for this computer. Once that's done, I just went ahead and typed in the IP address of the NVR 192.168.2.1 and you have your login screen. So I can go in, it says plugin blocked. So flash, it still uses flash, <laughs> why? All right, good news. It looks like uh, there's been an update, a firmware update to allow the HTML5 player. All right, so we're just installing the latest firmware. Good thing is you can do it via the web even though flash isn't supported. So you just go into settings, system, information and just make sure you're on the same hardware number and model number as the firmware so it says this is the hardware number and this is the firmware number and this is the model number it's giving me firmware version 3 and i'm on firmware version 2 so there should be a nice upgrade for it once you're happy with that go into maintenance and then select the file i've got it in downloads if you don't want to restore your camera settings to factory status, please uncheck the update configuration files option during the upgrade. So I don't have update configurations ticked, which means it won't do a factory reset. And system will restore factory configuration after rebooting continue. That's if you tick factory settings. I'm just gonna hit upgrade. And it says, please wait a while just updating right now on the screen. Be prepared, be real link. There you go, we're back. There you go, it's on the screen right there. Login. Current device won't support video streaming in clear mode, but we have something on the screen. So you can actually use it on the web, that's lucky. All right, so. We got it set up on the Mac directly, but of course, instead of plugging in the ethernet into the Mac, you can plug it in, to, for example, your Wi-Fi router. What that allows you to do is actually use the app from anywhere in the world, can, through the net, or at least your local network. So the way I've set up at the moment, I've got it plugged into my Wi-Fi router, and that means any computer on my Wi-Fi can access the NVR. And there's an app on your smartphone, just jump straight in. You can play back at like up to 16x recording speed. You can even do it on the new version of their app. And the good thing about it is you can block it from accessing the internet. The way I've done it is advanced. So I use a firewall called PFSense and I single out the IP address I've given it. So I give it a specific IP address and I tell PFSense to just block any internet calls to the IP to and from the IP address. So that means I can still access it using my Wi-Fi, but if I'm like in Jamaica or Nigeria or America or Russia or China or England, basically anywhere outside of my Wi-Fi, it won't allow it because it won't access um, over the internet. And I've also have a local firewall on my Mac and that firewall blocks the app from accessing the internet itself. So you can access everything through the local area network, but not on the internet. Previously in the old version of their app, you needed internet access to actually register your NVR and to connect to it locally. I complained to Relink about that and you know, in the next update they actually allowed you to do it. So that's pretty cool. So again, if you plug it into your Wi-Fi router, you can access it straight from your smartphone. And I'll just give you a quick tour of the latest app right here. So I've got one screen. This is live on my backyard. You can also switch into the next screen and it takes a couple of seconds and then it's, you get high quality view. You can also zoom out so I can go to a 4x split for example and it's got different rooms. The quality isn't as sharp when you zoom out because it can represent many screens at the same time but once you zoom in the quality gets pretty sharp. There's also a playback field over here and you can jump back to previous parts of the day to see what was going on there. Hit play and you can see, I don't know, my gate was open and it was closed and you can go ahead and download the footage. Now, a couple of things to note, the cameras that come with the system, they're proprietary. So that means they only work with the NVR. You get some camera systems and some cameras that you can plug in directly to, for example, NAS and have it automatically handle all the surveillance. But with this system, you have to go through the NVR. Now you can have a computer set up with this app running in the background and have it download and save all of the footage that it sees. So you get a backup that way. You can also have the NVR backup 
the videos to your FTP account. I've got it doing that. However, there is a problem at the moment. They said they'll fix it eventually. At the moment though, you can only FTP automatically download the low quality version of your camera, which is a uh, pretty poor for 4K camera. You want it to automatically save the high quality version of the files, that's disappointing. But that being said, you can always still download the files at 4K high resolution using the app interface or the client itself. Reallink did tell me that they do encrypt the video files. So if someone does steal your NVR, you know, the, they won't easily access the footage. I don't know how strong the encryption is. What I do know is that the, the cameras, they say that they're encrypted while transferring to the NVR and it's not encrypted, it's transcoded. Someone's already hacked them and it's got a really rubbish password. So you can actually, there's, a, there's an open source application called NeoLink. I haven't, I haven't got it working yet. But apparently you can use that to transcode the footage back into original footage and run it through your computer you know just directly and there is also an rtsp link so that means you can actually access the cameras via apps like vlc the problem with that at the moment is it only allows you to access the low quality footage i've complained to real link it's been a few months they said they'll try to address it so hopefully maybe by the end of the year you'll get full access to the nvr via VLC, VFTP, and it will get a lot powerfuler. They are improving it, so that's pretty good. But overall, for the system, it was dirt cheap. I got it from less for less than a thousand dollars on AliExpress, and Reallink said that they honor their AliExpress warranties. Actually, I bought it from the Reallink store on AliExpress, and uh, I recommend just check out the links. Maybe you shop around, basically. Look at Amazon, look at AliExpress, and look at eBay because uh, one of those providers will give you a good deal. I got AliExpress because it was the cheapest at the time and it was hard to find on anywhere else. So, so far I've got this system. I do like how cheap it is. Now, make sure you, you check out the next video or actually go through installing the cameras dotted around. Maybe I'll start, I'll show you the garage footage. I installed it around the garage to get like outside views of the house and that was pretty fun. And uh, it was pretty fun putting up. I really, really enjoyed that. I'm gonna be doing a lot of systems to figure out exactly where to put it because a lot of thinking needs to go into where you hide your NVR. So a lot of people out there, they hide, hide the NVR between the floorboards, you know, behind the fridge, you know, in the stairwell, in the attic, they make it hard to reach because if a basic criminal breaks in the house, if they see your NVR, they're just going to nab it and then you've lost your footage. Of course, if you do allow access to the internet or if you're smart about backups, Reallink, they have this cloud backup service so you can actually automatically backup your footage online. But of course, you know, smart criminals, they'll just cut the power to electricity, you know, cut, chop your wires before entering the house. <laughs> or they wear a mask, that kind of stuff. Anyway, that was my first um, diving into wired security cameras. I'm loving it. I really, really enjoy it. I'm happy with the system already. Yeah, I am happy. It's been a, I didn't know what I was going to get myself into. I'm happy I went with this system. There's lots of other systems to pick out from. But uh, this one seems to be working all right. There are limitations, like I said, and expressed. But for the price, you know, and up to 16 cameras, it's just hella fun. And the quality is pretty, pretty good. If you want to see a more in-depth setup guide on how I've set up the firewalls to make sure that the internet access is blocked, setting up PFSense on a NAS, that's where I've got it all running. Let me know. I'll probably shout out a video. But next up, I'll be doing a, an installation video. And that was hella fun. Hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show. Please, you can jump on me, I'll catch you. Come on, just jump, I'll catch you, I promise you. It's all right, come Whoa. on. Please, Asha, please don't, please don't. don't. Please, Asha, don't, my heart. Oh. Please, Asha, oh my God. Oh.